Hi everybody, welcome to Sandra's Art Studio. Today we are going to learn how to make these cute flamingo hair clips. And we start off by rolling out the polymer clay into that spaghetti machine that I have on the right bottom of the screen. And we start shaping the very base. As you can see on the table, I have my little sketch of what it's going to look like. And to get this look, I am rolling out that polymer clay really thin because I am making two layers. The one is the whole background and flamingos together and the other layer is just the flamingos and I don't want this to be too thick. So when I'm done with the polymer clay and I bake it and once it's cooled off I start painting it with gesso which is like a acrylic primer and then I paint it with a glossy acrylic in this case red paint and once it's dry what i did is i got the hot glue gun and i glued it to this plastic plate so when i pour the silicone rubber to make my mold the flamingos and little tails are not going to be swimming all over the place and touching each other and here i am using dragon skin by smooth on i like the product it's a little pricey but it's really good i like it and four hours later, I'm ready to take my flamingos and tails out of this plate. And as you can see, some of the silicone rubber did seep underneath my flamingos. So I grab an X-Acto knife and I just do a few little cuts around it. You can avoid this process by applying glue to entire base. And now that my mold is ready, I can pour my epoxy resin. In this case, I already have pigments mixed in there. I have some acrylic paint and I have some glitter and I have some iridescent flakes. Uh, you, of course, add whatever it is that you want. Make sure you read the directions on the epoxy resin that you are using because some of them will tolerate less and some of them will tolerate more of the pigments and additives that you're putting on your epoxy resin. So this is my first pour and if you have something like this, make sure that you are getting to the edges. Okay, I run a toothpick sometimes right on the edges to make sure that the bubbles that get trapped come out. Otherwise, you're gonna have to sand it down and make sure that that edge is nice and smooth, especially if you're making hair clips or hair breads. And once I'm done with that first pour, I let it sit there for a couple of hours and then I come with the second pour. In this case, it's going to be yellow because the flamingos have a little sun in their background. And with this fast curing resin, after four hours, I'm ready to take it out. And this is my first run on these. I was not really happy about it, so I actually did it again because I needed more intensity in my colors. But I don't think that first batch is going to waste. I'm actually going to try a couple things and I'll show what it actually looks like at the end of the tutorial. So once that second batch is done, I needed to attach these little D-rings that I created. And I figured out the way to hold them kind of sturdy would be to fold the same paper that the chopsticks came in. And I just folded and inserted into a D-ring and I was able to glue the D-rings to the flamingos with the same type of epoxy resin. And notice that I gave a little flare outwards with the D-rings application. If you don't do that and you have it exactly at a 45 degree angle, then when you give a little bend to the flamingos to shape the head, those D-rings won't work. They will be going inwards and it will be just not enough room for your stick. So heads up on that. And now I want to bring everything to the grinding bench, which is located in my garage. And I bring out this tool that is actually for cutting dog's toenails, but this is what I use for cutting the chopsticks. And so I have all of, all of my chopsticks ready. I cut one side out of slant. The other side is going to be grind it to a point and I also want to sand the back of my flamingos uh, because they're very slick and you want to have a little bit of a rough texture on the back of those hair clips because if you don't 
that means for some people this is going to slip right out. And when it comes to using the grinding bench, you want to make sure you wear some protective eyewear and also get really familiar with how the wheel works. You know, you want to go under it because if you start grinding on the top part of the wheel, it's going to throw it right at you. It's going to throw the item at you. But if you go right underneath the wheel, then if it's going to pull it from your hands, it will pull it away from you. And you also want to smooth the edges, make sure that there are no sharp edges. And once everything is ready, I bring it inside. I have a little box with a double-sided tape where I am going to glue all these sticks and attach them to the little tails that I created with the same epoxy that I use for everything else. And here I am at the final session where I actually embellish. In this case, I'm adding a little bit of that UV resin to the sun portion of the flamingos. And that's going to make it a little shinier. This particular resin is also what's called a doming resin. In other words, it has some surface tension and that's what prevents it from just spilling over the edges. Creating a nice emboss effect. And now to create the eyes, I'm using this puffy paint, which is for fabric. And it works very well on epoxy resin. It sticks very well. And so I'm applying a little dot for the eye and then I'm applying the crystal on top of that dot. If the crystal falls, I feel like it still has a dot and that dot is not gonna go anywhere. This um, puffy paint will stick to resin really, really good. And I'm also using the puffy paint for the black beak, of course, as you saw it on the video. So for the crystal on the eye, you don't want to apply the puffy paint and immediately apply the crystal because I feel like it's too wet. So do let it get a little tacky before you do that number, okay? And after everything is done, you want to take these babies out in the sun and leave them there for a good 10 minutes unless you have one of those UV torches because the doming resin that I applied on the sun is actually a UV resin. I got this crystal package from Amazon and it came with the tweezers and a little tube of gel and basically you can just put a little gel on the tweezers or on a toothpick to get your crystals and apply the eye. So there, pretty cute. And now I take him out in the sun for a good 10 minutes. And after that, I'm ready for the hot and cold treatment. And I mentioned earlier in the video that I was going to show you guys what I did with the batch that I was not too happy about because I didn't put enough pigment. So what I ended up doing was painting the back with white gesso. And I do that with a lot of my hair clips because it gives a little bit of texture and it's an acrylic base, it's not toxic and once it's dry it stays there it doesn't it doesn't come off that easy so the hot water is going to allow me to bend the flamingos into the shape i want and the cold water is going to actually set the shape so hot water to bend it and cold water to set the shape and i also realized that with the d-rings um there's not a whole lot of bending you know like right there i didn't think i bent too much and it turned out that I had to take it out of the cold water, put it back in the hot water, and give it a little bit less of a bend. So it was like a little bit of a trial and error, and this is the first time I'm doing the D-rings. And I also realized another little thing, which is maybe next time put the D-rings all the way to the outer edge, so that way I have more room to maneuver the sticks. So that won't happen again. And after getting the right curve to these flamingo hair clips, I am ready to try it out. I hope you enjoyed this video and you know how it works. Give me a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.